Okay, um, so hello everyone and welcome to this talk on non-covering attacks and defenses. My name is Sohail and this is the joint work with my advisor Giancarlo and we are both from uh, CISPA Germany. So first things first, uh, let us first refresh our knowledge about uh, dump covering attacks. Uh, what is dump covering? So dump covering is a codeless markup injection attack where attackers confuse a web application by injecting markups whose ID or name collides with uh, security sensitive variables and consequently overwrite their value. Let me show you a concrete example. Assume we have a web page uh, example.com with a dump tree that contains this uh, benign script. The code first creates a script tag and then sets its SRC attribute to a variable called window.bulbo.config.href or a default value, say, script.js, and finally adds it to the DOM tree. Now, this script seems to be doing okay at first sight, right? Because we're just creating a script tag and setting its SRC attribute to something we define, but what if I tell you this is vulnerable and how is this even possible? Well, let me show you how. If an attacker injects a codeless markup with ID global config, then browsers will resolve a window.globalconfig to the injected node, which is due to a specification rule called named access on the window object. And consequently, the script source will now refer to malicious.js instead of script.js, enable attackers to achieve arbitrary client-side code execution, which is the holy grail as for client-side security. And this attack is known as DOM covering. Now, unfortunately, our knowledge about uh, DOM covering vulnerabilities is, is very limited, despite the fact that they are known since more than a decade ago, when they affected pages containing uh, frame busting code, that is, assignments like top.location equals self.location. Now, back then, attackers used an iframe named self to clobber and hijack the top window location of uh, web pages. In this example, one important question is what are the attack markups in variants exist out there that, that can be abused to achieve the same attacks, which has been left unanswered so far. So unfortunately, when looking at the possible combinations of tags, attributes, code features, and runtime behaviors, we still miss a systematic exploration of this thread, and we address this problem in our first research question. Then our second research question focuses on automated detection techniques using which we can, we can understand um, how prevalent is dump covering in the wild and how bad is the situation. And finally, recent dump covering vulnerabilities in popular websites like Gmail revamped new discussions about effectiveness and adequacy of existing countermeasures, which we'll have a look in the final part of our paper. So coming to the first research question, our goal was to exhaustively generate DOM covering markups starting from covering markups that we know. For example, we know that any two tags uh, containing the same ID form an array-like object called uh, HTML collections. And we can use that to cover nested properties uh, like uh, x.y. So our methodology was, uh, was to review existing work and HTML specifications looking for past instances and specification rules causing the browser overrides, and then use these to derive uh, clobbering markup generation rules. And finally, dynamically tested the generated markups in various browsers. So in total, we generated over 24 million test cases covering all combinations of uh, HTML tags and attributes and tested these in 19 different mobile and desktop browsers, which is virtually all of them. And as a result, uh, we were able to identify over 31,000 covering markups across five different techniques, of which only 481 were previously known. For example, we found that for certain combinations of tags, such as two object tags, HTML collections can be formed when the two tags have the same name, so not just the same ID. Now, for timing reasons, please refer to the paper for more information about uh, individual DOM covering markups. But a spoiler alert, there are also discrepancies and differences across browser, uh, uh, different browsers, which makes uh, defenses against DOM covering increasingly more challenging. And you can, of course, use a demo of our dump covering markup generation service online or play around with it on our website, dumpcop.xyz, where you can specify the clobbering target and value, and you can get attack payloads following the, the markup generation algorithm we described in the paper. 
Okay, so coming to the second research question, uh, we created an open source static dynamic tool for detecting dome covering vulnerabilities at scale. At a high level, the tool has three components, uh, data collection, vulnerability analysis, and verification. The data collection module is based on Puppeteer and Chrome DevTools Particle, and it collects the page resources given a single seed URL of the application under test. Then given a list of uh, sync functions and built-in APIs that were identified to be collaborable in research question one, the tool modeled the client-side code as a property graph and then traverses this graph to identify data flows from DOM covering sources to security sensitive scenes. Here, contrary to the traditional taint analysis, not all DOM covering sources are a predefined syntactic object, but rather they are a specific property of the program. Hence, identifying such sources requires tracking the propagation of the data flows itself to determine if a variable is undefined in a certain execution context or not. Now, this component outputs uh, collaborable data flows. Finally, the verification module uses dynamic analysis, particularly forced execution with Eero and dynamic chain tracking to confirm the collaborability of the candidate data flows. And we use this tool to conduct an empirical study to quantify the prevalence of DOM covering in the vial, processing over 24 billion lines of JavaScript code across the top 5K Tranquil uh, websites and crawling over 200,000 web pages. And our results were alarming. We were able to detect over 9,400 collaborable data flows across uh, 491 affected sites, out of which we were able to create uh, working exploits for 44 sites, including popular ones like GitHub, Trello, email, and, and so on which led to client side success, open redirections, and request forgery attacks that were confirmed and patched. Okay, now that we know dump covering is prevalent, the obvious question is, how do we defend against it? Well, the first obvious mitigation is uh, HTML sanitization, uh, as attackers need to uh, inject HTML to exploit dump covering vulnerabilities. So we evaluated the robustness of uh, 29 client-side and server-side HTML sanitizers across the top five web programming languages. And the basic idea was that we test the sanitizers against the 31.4K covering markups we identified in RP1 and check whether the sanitizers changes or removes the name properties in the output. And we test these sanitizers in both their default and most strict sanitization configuration. And what we found was that in total, 16 sanitizers are vulnerable to at least uh, one covering markup by default, including popular ones like Dumpurify, Mozilla Village, and Google Kata. Interestingly, 13 of these sanitizers are also vulnerable in their most strict configuration. Conversely, the other 13 sanitizers always remove name properties, including cases that do not even lead to dump covering, such as an anchor tag with the name property. Now, this may uh, prevent dump covering attacks, but may also create usability issues uh, uh, in cases where developers need to use uh, ID and name attributes for legitimate functionalities. Okay, an alternative solution to removing name properties that we propose is to isolate their namespace. Um, this mitigates almost all DOM covering cases, but may require some implementation changes by uh, developers. And what this means uh, in practice is that we essentially prefix the idea of name properties with a constant a string, say, say constant. So we implemented namespace isolation in uh, the DOM purify sanitizer by introducing a new config named sanitize name props. And you can learn more about it in, in GitHub. Finally, there are also other mitigation techniques like content security policy or object freezing, which are not very effective for dump covering attacks. And for timing reasons, uh, please uh, see our paper for more information about their efficacy. Last but not the least, there is also a kill switch to disable name property accesses at browser level, which fixes all dump covering cases but in return can cause significant breakage. So in our study, we conducted a measurement to quantify the cost benefit balance. And in line with Google Chrome telemetry, we observed that almost 13% of the web pages used uh, name properties to implement functionalities that would otherwise break. 
And interestingly, these 13% uh, are scattered over half of the sites in our data set. And as the benefit, uh, this will fix uh, only the 491 sites, uh, which we discovered to be vulnerable. So this boils down to a breakage benefit balance ratio of uh, 5 to 1, which means that this solution is infeasible at this moment. As an alternative, we propose to W3C to have an opt-in CSP or permission policy flag to allow developers to optionally disable name properties. But apparently in the chat, it seems that we are the only ones believing this is a good idea, mainly because it has major implement, uh, implementation effort for browser vendors to implement such a binary flag that kills all DOM covering cases. Okay, now that existing countermeasures are not bulletproof, uh, at the end it boils down to which guidelines developers should follow to minimize the risk of uh, DOM covering. So we extracted the vulnerable lines of code and characterized them based on their high-level syntax and semantics and identified eight common patterns. Uh, let me show you three of these. So in the first two patterns, the developers access a, a custom property of window or built-in uh, API property and then use this value in a sensitive sync. In the third pattern, the developer assigns a property to document and then immediately uh, reads and uses this value in a sensitive sync. Now, developers can fix these cases by using explicit variable declarations, for example, with the var declarator, or by type checking the API to not be an HTML element as a result of DOM covering. And finally, not using do do the document object for storing globals because document properties are always overshadowed by DOM covering. And we also incorporated these guidelines into the OWASP cheat sheet series to act as a reference guide for developers, which you can also refer to for more information if you're interested. Okay, so what did we learn in this study? First, DOM covering markups come in many forms and there are over 31,000 of them. Second, DOM covering is ubiquitous in the wild, affecting 9.8% of the Django top 5K sites. And third, existing defenses are helpful, but may not completely cut it. Finally, our source code is open source and publicly accessible on GitHub, and we have also online demos on our website from gov.xyz, so I encourage you to have a look and play around with them. Thanks a lot for your attention, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Any questions? We have one at the back. Hey, uh, super cool talk. Um, quick question about your, uh, you, you mentioned that you found, what, bugs on 10% of all websites, including some big ones like GitHub and Vimeo. Um, I think you mentioned that you actually wrote some exploit code that, that showed the vulnerability. Uh, to my understanding, DOM clobbering is only useful if you already have HTML injection. Um, how did you build exploit on websites that didn't have that? Yeah, so basically, okay, many websites ac accept uh, input uh, from, uh, from users, right? So uh, normally to exploit DOM covering vulnerabilities, either you need injection or insertion. And insertion means that you abuse the legitimate functionality of, of the application. In the case of GitHub or GitLab, for instance, you can inject markdown and this markdown code, uh, for instance, for the readme in, in the repository, this markdown code uh, at the end is transformed to, to HTML, right? So, or there are also other functionalities, like think about uh, posts in WordPress uh, or emails, like, like Gmail, you have MP for email sanitizer, right? So web applications accept uh, inputs uh, as HTML, and uh, in these cases, uh, because the, the HTML that you inject is codeless, meaning it does not contain JavaScript code, you may be able to uh, transform it to XSS. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? So I have one question. So this is a very cool and comprehensive piece of work. You talk about both the attacks and the defenses. Um, so is it a solved problem, or is there anything else left to be done in this space? Um, well, I think. Um the major issue is that, as, as I also mentioned in the talk, is that existing defenses that we have are not uh, bulletproof. So unless uh, developers follow certain guidelines, the, the risk of DOM covering attacks are still present, uh, given that uh, this uh, name for accesses cannot be killed currently at uh, browser level, which is the kill switch to basically fix all cases. 
but uh, if you follow uh, uh, secure guidelines, uh, in most cases, you should be fine. Okay. Let's thank the speaker then. Thank you. Thank you.